are about 20 different ways to do just about anything in Photoshop for better or for worse. I have five of the most common edits and effects I see of floating around and how I like to do them to make them just that much better, quicker, and easier. I'm Abby Esparza and all the resources featured today can be found over on Envato Elements. Get unlimited downloads of photos and fonts, all with a super simple commercial licensing. Plus a no locking contract means you can cancel anytime. So go ahead and subscribe now with the link down in the description and uh, follow along with me. Classic Light Leak. The go-to is a blob of color on an empty layer set of screen. It's fast, but it's flat. Instead, try using a gradient map adjustment layer, also set the screen. And for a golden hour glow, go for reds in those darks and oranges in the highlights. And then all we need to do is invert the gradient map's layer mask using Control slash Command I and mask with white wherever we want our light leak. This is going to give your light source just way more dynamic feeling color as opposed to just that flat color showing up in the shadows. And we can also use the gradient map toggles to further refine how that color is distributed. You can of course add more than two colors and even save some presets to make this just as fast as adding that uh, boring blob of color. Just as quick, just as easy, but just that much better. <laughs> Onto a classic duotone inspired effect, which is already typically done using gradient maps, which work fine, but this time let's ditch the maps and use solid color fill layers instead. Let's create two solid color fill layers, the top color should be a brighter value, and the bottom color a darker value. Contrasting color combinations like red and blue will work best. I'm going to go with a darker deep blue for the bottom layer, and a nice hot pink for the top layer. Now let's go to the upper options bar, choosing image, apply image. We want to set the layer to our subject or image layer. In my case, it's just the default background layer, but if you've renamed that layer or imported it differently, like you just dragged and dropped it in, you'll just want to choose whatever it's named. And next, we can play with the different channel options. This will change image to image. For this image, I like both the green and RBG channel. I think I'll go with RBG and then press OK. And now we can further edit and refine the duotone effect by editing the mask. Hitting it with some image adjustments, brightness, contrast is always a great option. Just playing with the sliders, looking good. And because these are just color fill layers, we can just click and change their color anytime we need to. And we can just as easily save our favorite color combinations using the save swatches button. I have a few saved down here. So one of the main reasons this is my preferred way to do duotone stuff is we can use layer modes and opacity controls to further refine the effect um, on each individual layer. Pin light, linear light, and hard light are all great modes to play with. I'm going to go with linear light. I like how that looks. And yeah, gradient maps are a fine option, but if you want a bit more control, I'd try out colorful layers. Moving on to glitch effects, specifically chromatic aberration, which is a fun word I love to say. Let's start with the typical process of getting that base chromatic aberration effect, and then I want to look at how we can play with it. First, let's duplicate our image using Control slash Command J, and then double click the duplicate to open the layer styles panel. Here, we want to look at advanced blending, where we'll find the channels. Let's uncheck the R channel for now, but we'll play with these a little later on. And now let's grab the move tool and let's nudge the duplicate layer over and up five to 10 pixels. The direction doesn't really matter. You could go diagonal if you wanted. The more we move the layer though, the stronger that chromatic aberration effect is going to be. And I always suggest adding a mask to this chromatic aberration layer and masking out the face of any subject using a soft round brush so the edges are nice and well, soft. And my main gimmick here is just that we don't have to stop here. There are a million ways we can edit this. First, we don't have to be stuck with the classic red cyan color combination. Let's double click the chromatic aberration layer and mix and match the different channel boxes. I love a lime green and purple moment. 
which we get when the green channel is off with both the red and the blue channels on. Second, our chromatic aberration layer is just a layer, uh, so we can add filters, warp, and transform it like any other layer. Let's add a filter distort wave and play with the wavelength, uh, setting the max to around 830. And that'll give us a nice subtle wavy distortion. We can continue to push that distortion even further by unlinking the layer mask and using Warp Transform to push and pull the edges of the image. And you can push this as far as you want, even layering multiple effects on top of one another, getting really nice, almost layered exposure effects. But let's move on down the line to neon shapes. My main issue with a lot of neon shaped designs that I see is just how flat they kind of feel. It's a white shape with some inner and outer glow applied and then called done. Here is my go-to layer effect recipe for a more dynamic feeling glow. For video purposes, I'm just going to click through my layer effects right now, just so we're not here rattling off settings, no one has time for that. But you can see the full settings in the written version linked down below, or uh, pause. The main goal here is really just to create slight variations in the light while making sure everything stays vivid and bright. The colors can be easily changed in one of two ways, uh, at two different points. First, you can change it here, just by switching every pink shade to your desired color. Now, there is an easier way, if that seems a little tedious, but before uh, moving on to the second way to change color, let's save this as a new style. You do not want to have to recreate this. It's incredibly annoying. And now, whenever you have a new shape, a text layer, or standard pixel layer that you want to turn neon, you just have to go to your styles and choose your a new neon preset. And you can save multiple different colors, or to change the color uh, super fast without messing with any layer styles, just group your neon layers together and clip any color changing adjustment layer into that group. A hue saturation adjustment layer is gonna work best here, I bet. Even if you only have one neon design, you'll still want to put it in a group as layer styles override adjustment layers if clipped directly into that layer. And last up, we have a rain effect. The old school way includes using noise, layer modes, and motion blur. My preferred method involves literally none of those. Let's create a new layer and fill it with black using the paint bucket tool here. And next, we're going to go to Filter, Pixelate, uh, Mesotent, setting the type to Coarse Dots. Zoom in nice and close and go to Select, Color Range. Click on a white dot and adjust the fuzziness to 200. We just want to make sure all the white dots are selected. Okay. Now let's add a layer mask and enter Selected Mask from the Properties panel with the layer mask selected. We're going to look to global refinements, set the feather to 2.5 pixels, and a contrast to, let's say, 50%. And this will thin out the dots. The more dots, the heavier the range, so feel free to play with these two settings. This is really just a good starting point. Once you are happy with the dots, uh, press OK. And now we're going to duplicate this layer two times using Control slash Command J, leaving us with a total of three dot layers. And then we're going to select all these dot layers and right click merge layers. And this will make the dots brighter. And next we're going to duplicate the dot layer two more times again, leaving us again with three layers. And we're going to hide two of these layers. We're going to edit each layer separately. So let's go to filter, blur gallery, path blur, and stretch the rain using the blue path right here. And this is going to give us our initial motion blur effect. Now, if you're wondering why use a path blur and not motion blur, because by placing points on a path and pulling, we can actually create really nice movement in the rain. You always want your rain to be going in more than one direction. How strong that movement is going to be up to you. You can create a really intense storm like rain or a more subtle effect like I'm doing here. You can also play with the movement speed, though 50 uh, works fine uh, in this case. 
Now let's unhide the second dot layer, grab the move tool, and right click flip horizontally. So we have some variation in the dots. We also want to transform it to be around 20% larger. And again, filter, blur gallery, path blur. I recommend making the path curve in the opposite direction than you did the first. The rain should fall in the same general direction, but we want slight variation in the movement. Looking good. And for our last dots, we don't have to flip it because we want to increase this layer size by a full 250% using the transform upper options bar. It's going to be way easier to use this transform option as opposed to manually enlarging it, trust me. And then we can do one more round of filter, blur gallery, path blur. And I'm also going to increase the movement speed to 70 for this last layer uh, to give the rain a bit more oomph. <laughs> and finally, let's select all of the current rain layers and right click merge layers, leaving us with one solid rain layer. We're not done though. We're going to go to image adjustments, hue saturation, check colorize, and add a tint of color to the rain. Rain is clear and will reflect the light in its environment. So in this case, a uh, really cool vivid red. And bonus step, you can always uh, duplicate the rain layer to make it appear stronger or uh, you know, heavier and mask out any areas you want to be less intense. You can also play with layer modes like screen. A screen works really well with colored rain on darker backgrounds like we have here. Okay, so that last one isn't the quickest and might be worth actually making an action out of. You can automate a good 50% of that one. It's easy and has a great end result, but it's a bit tedious. <laughs> But that's going to do it for today. Check out some of the other awesome videos that Envato Touch Plus has to offer. If you liked this video, consider giving us a like and even subscribing if you still need to. And remember to click the little bell icon to be notified of all new videos, including tips, tricks, and tutorials. A happy designing. See you next time, guys.